Hey, what's going on team? It's Ricky with TechBud Solutions, and in this video, I wanted to share my story. It was my transition from like 22 to 23 years old. Um, and a lot of the things that I share on YouTube have to do much more with like my success in the different markets that I invest in and stuff like that. But, um, and I'm known realistically as more of a conservative investor. Uh, but when I was like 22 years old, I remember like late 2017, I was in this position, and again, I'm, I, just hear me out throughout this like kind of like story. I was investing in different markets. Um, I was doing kind of like what it is that I do now, uh, but I had a lot less kind of capital. Um, and, and let me give you some background, right? So um, I was still um, working my uh, job where it came down to telecommunication sales. I was still going to school full time. I was still trading. I was still investing in cars. I was still investing in motorcycles. Um, and I was trying to expand into like, you know, real estate. And I had um, at that point four properties. So let me give you some background on that. Um, I bought my first house when I was uh, 20 years old. Um, I followed up with buying my dream car, which is a GTR shortly after um, when I was 21. Um, about six months down the road after buying the GTR, six months to maybe eight months, I ended up buying my neighbor's house, which is something that like if you followed me for a long enough period of time, um, you would know. Um, and then I really got into like investing in cars and became more aware of wanting uh, and, ha and kind of grew a passion for investing in real estate. So I was always just proactively looking with a real estate agent that I had. Uh, we we're always on the hunt for like the next property. Um, and it has to do with just partnering up with a, you know, a, a just good agent, right? Um, I was investing in cars. I had a GTR. I sold that at an M3. I sold that. I bought a Corvette Z06. Um, I sold that. And I had a couple like more of like daily driver cars in between that. Um, and then going up to like kind of how it started. So I had two properties at the time, um, like late 2016. Uh, moved on over to 2017 early. I ended up buying my uh, 2015 Corvette Z06, a beautiful white car. If you've again followed me on Instagram for a while, you would have seen it. Um, I had a couple cars in between that. Um, and then this opportunity came about. A member messaged me about um, buying one of the condos that he had for sale. Uh, ended up buying that condo outright. Um, got it for a really good deal. Knew that the margin of profit was worth it. Um, and it was a lot of money um, for me, right? To be able to buy um, this, in a sense, condo cash. Uh, the cool thing about that condo is because they needed money so bad um, and the margin of profit that the condo had, just to put into perspective, again, I'm in Arizona, um, the condo was worth roughly around like 110 to $120,000. Uh, was able to negotiate down the price uh, to about $75,000 if I'm not mistaken. I was able to rent it out and then later sold it. But again, I did, I, at this point, just recently bought it. I had my Corvette Z06, which I had a $20,000 loan on, um, and I bought the car for, I think, $59,000. Um, so I had enough money in that car. I, again, I had my first two properties, which I already um, paid off more than 20% of you know the, the loan on that specific property. And then moving in to, you know, after closing on that first condo, a neighbor, after I purchased the first one, reached out to me asking if I was interested in purchasing that second condo. Um, ended up buying that one for $10,000 less cash as well. And, and I'm going to give you some background on that. Ended up buying that one. And then shortly after that, this opportunity came about. You guys know that I'm a huge car freak. Um, I love investing in cars. And what I mean by investing in cars is we try to find the best car deals within our area uh, of both daily drivers to exotics. Um, and we try to just focus on getting the best deal possible, enjoying the car, and then being able to potentially sell it in the future for a break-even price or for actually a profit. So I came about um, this 2012 McLaren MP4-12C. Again, if you followed me on my social media accounts, uh, you would have seen it. Clean title. Um, it was from a foreign student at ASU uh, leaving to his home country. And this opportunity came about. But uh, it went from wanting to ask for $120,000, which at that time, that's what that car was worth, for me to be able to negotiate a cash offer for $100,000. The thing about that is, again, I had my two first properties, which is like, I lived in my house, I owned my neighbor's house, right? I, I paid off 20% of each house off. I had my Corvette Z06 with a $20,000 loan, I had about almost $40,000 in equity into it. I had a couple cars and a couple motorcycles like at the house. Um, I'd say about like ten to fifteen thousand dollars worth of it. Um, and then I had the two condos that I just recently purchased, cash. And then I was presented this opportunity of a McLaren MP4-12C, which was obviously an amazing kind of like dream car. I never really thought that I was going to be able to buy one. 
but I knew that I wasn't going to be able to purchase it by myself. And you guys might be like, well, what the heck, what do you mean? I didn't want to reach out and try to get a loan because I knew that I wasn't going to keep it for a very long period of time. My plan was kind of to keep it for about one to three months, enjoy it, put a couple miles on it, um, just experience what the McLaren has to offer, but I knew that it was depreciating at a fast enough pace that I probably wanted to get rid of it pretty quickly. This is where, um, I, this is like the whole point of the story. I was someone that like was saving money as much as I could, right, to find these different opportunities. On the second condo, I remember I didn't necessarily have enough money to buy the condo outright at that specific time. I posted my Corvette Z06 for sale because I saw so much more value and the margin of profit on the condo was worth so much more. I put my Z06 for sale. It's a Z06, I had it for $63,000 for sale uh, in 2017. It's a lot of money, and again, it's not a high volume car, meaning that not a lot of people are essentially looking for a $63,000 car. It's not something that's going to sell like a Honda Civic. So I knew it was going to take time. So what I did was I started jumping on calls, reaching out to different people that I knew to see if they would partner up with me on this specific investment of this condo. I was able to get in contact with a investor. I went 60-40 on that deal and I told them and agreed on a 50-50 split on profit. The opportunity was so great to me that I knew that when I presented this opportunity, the margin of profit and this kind of like little golden nugget that I landed on, I knew that it was of value due to my knowledge of you know, buying the previous condo and what I learned from my real estate agent and my lender. I didn't want to take no for an answer. And this is in the traditional aspect where I think a lot of people would be like, well, I don't have the money for it, so I'm just not going to be able to make the deal happen. And this is the premise of the story. Then, not only did I overcome that obstacle, and, no, and not only was I stretched with money, but now after purchasing, right, the McLaren MP412C, I also, the, the only way that I was going to be able to purchase that is to reach out to another investor. We did a 50-50 split, if I'm not mistaken, on that specific car, and a 50-50 split when it came down to um, the revenue that that car would produce. I knew that I did not have enough money to purchase that car outright. I knew that I would probably qualify for a loan, but I knew that it would hurt my credit in the long run, and because I was such an like avid, wanting to become an avid real estate investor, I just didn't want to damage my credit. So what I did was I was willing to forfeit some of the profits an effort to build a relationship with a new investor, not take no for an answer and just let this opportunity present itself. Due to my knowledge of that specific car, what it was worth, what I could buy it for, and how much we could sell it for, the investment was worth it. And that's why I decided to not take no for an answer. So I overcame the obstacle when it came uh, purchasing the second condo, and I overcame the obstacle when I was presented this you know, McLaren, which a lot of people might be viewed um, or might view the McLaren as a depreciation asset. I 100% get it in the traditional aspect, but the way that we do things and the way that I understood that specific, to my eyes, investment, it was worth it. I 100% I just knew that it was worth it. And that's why day in and day out, after I came across that opportunity, I think I had five to seven days for the foreign student to come back to the United States, uh, I believe he was from China, um, to close the deal. And I just remember managing my school, managing my trading, managing my um, overall just work in general, what it is that I had to do just to stay afloat and the different things that I was juggling. The, the pressure to understand that, okay, I know I'm not gonna be able to buy this McLaren outright myself, so I need to make sure that I could reach out to different investors to make this deal happen. Obviously, in the traditional aspect, people are not going to value or see the McLaren as a investment. I 100% understand in the traditional aspect, it does not make sense. I found an investor that was, you know, uh, aware of what it is that I was doing and that valued me and, and valued my opinion and, and believed in me. After that, owning the McLaren, having the, uh, and owning the Corvette Z06, I bought a BMW M3, which also had a decent margin of profit. I had the two condos and then my two other properties that were two normal houses. So I had four houses and I think three, um, three kind of like sports cars, right? You can call it that. And then I also had, I think, two to three motorcycles at the time that we were investing in and I had different like, um, that I was like buying it with my friends and stuff like that and that we were selling. I was so stretched with money. Again, I was still going to school full time. I, I knew I had to pay for my tuition. I had to like sustain myself. And if anything went wrong with these properties, with these cars, with these investments, 
I honestly would have been done. And this is the premise of the video. I'm known as a conservative investor and in the traditional aspect, yes, I am. Especially when it comes down to my day trading um, and how I approach, I think, a lot of these markets. I like to become aware of what it is that I'm investing in, have at least some form of opinion, and may be able to make an uh, investment decision based off of that. At that point, when I was 22 years old, and again, I know I'm young, right? I had so much of my capital invested. I believe I had fourteen to thirteen thousand dollars to my name. I still understand that that is a lot of money, no question about that. I'm, I'm not down, I'm not like saying that that's a little bit of money, but think about it. I have a car that's worth one hundred twenty thousand dollars. I have a Z06 that's worth about sixty to sixty-five thousand dollars. I have an M3 that's worth about thirty thousand dollars, and I have two condos that I just bought that I'm renting out. So if anything happens with that, I'd be done. And then two properties that I was also renting out. Um, as in my two houses, that if anything happens with that, if they need any like upgrades or any tenant improvements or anything like that, I would most likely be done. If something goes wrong with the McLaren, like oil change or anything like that, I'd be done. I still have to insure everything, still have to pay taxes on everything. I was at a point where I remember for like two months when I was trying to juggle everything. And I'll show you guys a couple pictures. I had the McLaren, I had the Z06, I had the four properties, and I felt like I was like thriving, but inside i just remember that like i was scared i was scared because of the position that i put myself in but it was because of that position and my understanding and and how i believed in myself that i knew that i was doing something i was investing in in a series of markets that i was at least knowledgeable in that i knew that i can come out on top the first investment that i ended up selling was in my eyes well again investment was the z06 I believe I sold it for 62500 I made a video, uh, YouTube video about it. Shortly after that, I sold the McLaren MP4-12C for one hundred and fifteen dollars or $120,000. Shortly after that, I ended up selling the first condo for $113,000. And then shortly after that, I sold the last condo for $123,000. And I remember after being able to you know, sell the properties, come off on top, but not just that, but be able to pay the investors that believed in me was one of the most rewarding things that I've like experienced. That I put myself in a position where in my eyes, I was so close to potentially failing, literally potentially losing everything. Because if I lost the car, right? And let's say I lose the, the houses, I would be left with potentially the, the $14,000 or whatever it is that I would have left after losing everything. You know, again, I know I'm super young and it's kind of like a make it or break it. And I, I'm not here to, obviously I'm sharing this story not for anybody to feel like bad for me, but I, I put myself in a position where that was the closest that I have ever been to losing it all. And it felt so good to feel empowered by having people that like believed in me and trusted me in what it was that I was doing. And the reason that I'm sharing this story is because we have such a huge focus within like our YouTube channel that, you know, you could only succeed, right? And I know that at that moment, you know, things could have gone either way. I, I you know, there's always this form of luck. I, I, there's like this saying that it's like the harder you work, the luckier you get. And I do believe in that in the sense that if you're someone that's knowledgeable, if you believe in yourself and there's a reason behind everything it is that you do and you understand that and you take advantage of those opportunities, even if you come out like and, and taking a loss on it, it's it's a learning experience. And that was what I was like, you know, so empowered like on. It's this idea that like I was put in a position where it was so critical to like my success that after that, that's when I really began to flourish. Um, you know, bought more GTRs, bought more McLarens. Again, not just to throw money away, uh, but to focus in still being able to make money off of them. And that's something that, like, you know, we try to empower people on. The understanding that just because you have money doesn't mean that you have to spend it freely and not in an effective way. That you can enjoy what it is that you are doing and still make money while doing so. It just means that you have to dedicate a little bit more time to learning more about the market. I have a huge passion for cars and that's why I choose to invest in them. There's people that have huge passion for shoes or for watches or for whatever your pastime or hobby is that actually make money while they enjoy these like, you know, materialistic things that normally people 
lose value in. And this is what I'm here to share is that it doesn't matter what other people think. I think one of the biggest and, and, and best qualities that I have as an individual is not that I'm extremely talented in any market. Um, I, I can honestly say is like I'm not any smarter, I'm not any better than a majority of people. I just tend to be someone that doesn't take no for an answer and I knew that from a very early age. I knew that I could make these deals happen. I understood what it was that I was doing and I felt comfortable enough to put myself in that position in a sense to make it or break it. And I just wanted to share my story with you guys. So um, that's really just it. Um, I hope that this video can somewhat like empower you, uplift you, and remind you that um, you know if you're doing something that is right, if you're surrounding yourself with people that empower you, if you're just making sure that every single day you are learning something new, spending time with those that you care about and that are of value, forget about what those people are saying about you that might be negative. Again, those that talk and, and subjugate others are probably because they have nothing better to do. You don't see people like Elon Musk, you know, Jeff Bezos or Mark Zuckerberg bringing down or subjugating others because they're flourishing in the markets that they excel in. Same thing with yourself. Ignore the noise because anybody can talk, but it's those that are doing that know that they are bringing value and working towards a goal for your families, for your future families, and to be able to live a life that, you know, can be extremely fulfillful regardless of the monetary aspect. So thank you guys again for your time. I hope that I earned your thumbs up in this video. Um, be sure to subscribe if you guys haven't done so already. We do have a little bit under half a million subscribers um, and I can't thank you guys enough for all the love and the support. Um, and if you guys you know, have any questions, any suggestions for any future videos, all you guys have to do is comment down below. Um, just a little friendly reminder, we do run the largest Facebook group for those who invest in the stock market. That's going to be that first link in the description if you guys want to stay connected. Wish you guys an amazing 2019 and like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green up. Take it easy team.